Okay, so we are doing quadratic formula. So this is our last method we're learning for simplifying, or sorry, solving radicals. Um, and you've seen it before. You saw it in Algebra 1. You saw it in um, Algebra 2. I don't know about geometry, but I know you've seen it. So um, it's used to find your x-intercepts, your solutions, your roots, your zeros, which is what we've been solving for with all of these methods. Okay, it always works even when it can't be factored. So this method is the only method that works every single time, okay? Um, set equation equal to zero before you find your a, b, and c, and then use your quadratic standard form to plug it in. So one thing I do want you to realize here is this says negative b, so it's actually the opposite of b. While this one just says b, so this one's exact b. Okay. Another thing that we're going to talk about that I don't know if you've learned before is the discriminant. So your discriminant is what's inside the radical, not including the radical. So you'll see I'm not highlighting the radical. I'm just highlighting b squared minus 4 times a times c. That is your discriminant. Okay. And if your discriminant is greater than 0, you have two real solutions. If your discriminant is equal to 0, you have one real solution. And if your discriminant is uh, less than zero, aka negative, then you have zero real solutions. And when I say zero real solutions, I want you to realize that means two imaginary solutions. Okay, so yes, it's zero real solutions, but you do still have two imaginary solutions. Okay, so when we look at number one, it says given this and it's plugged in already it says write uh, or what quadratic equation was used to plug in so remember this is your opposite b and this is exact b so we have to find our a our b and our c so what is our a well we have a here and here so what's a two what's my b uh, 13. positive 13 and what's c Perfect. So when I plug that into my quadratic formula, which is right here, I have a, which is 2x squared, plus b, which is 13x, and then plus c, which is negative 7, so I'm just going to do minus 7. So this is the equation that was used to plug it into this quadratic formula. And then it says, what are the solutions to the equation? So we're going to finish simplifying it. It already simplified the first piece, which is negative 13, plus or minus the square root of something over, what's 2 times 2 in the denominator? 4. Four. So we simplify these in three different pieces. We're going to simplify this first piece. We're going to simplify the denominator. And we're going to simplify just the discriminant. So you'll see my house is still there. So when I type it in the calculator, Just what's under the house, so 13 squared, use parentheses, because if it's negative and you don't use parentheses, you will get the wrong answer. I get 225. Is 225 a perfect square? Uh, yeah. If you're not sure, is that okay? Yes. Yeah, you can do second x squared and type 225, and it is a perfect square. It's 15. So this becomes negative 13 plus or minus 15 over 4. Are these like terms? Yes, yes. Yeah, neither of them have a radical, neither of them are imaginary, so we can now separate and simplify. So I get negative 13 minus 15 over 4 and negative 13 plus 15 over 4. So alpha y equals enter, negative 13 minus 15 over 4, and I get negative 7. You can hit second, enter, and it'll retype it, and just highlight your minus and put a plus. So negative 7 and a half. For your two solutions. Any questions there? Okay, so let's look at number two. So number two is already set up for me. I know it says f of x, and we said it needs to be equal to zero. 
So a, b, and c are on the same side. You can literally just put equal zero. It's not a big deal. Okay, so what is my a? Yeah, if there's no number there, it's a one. What's b? E. And what's c? Negative eleven. Okay, so knowing that, I'm gonna do what I call the skeleton. So that orange paper that you have, I don't know where mine went. Um, whatever. Okay, that has this on the bottom of it. It's the negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4 times a times c. Every time I say a, a letter, I'm putting parentheses instead so I can plug it in. Oh, there's mine. So this is what I call the skeleton right here. So I put them in there super lightly so you remember which one goes where, but this is the skeleton because that's what we have to fill in. Okay. Has the bones but not the, the meat. Okay, so what is... I know that's weird. Okay, so... B, B, A, C, and this is my A. So B is 8, so that's going to go here and here. A is 1, which goes here and here, and C is negative 11. And we're going to simplify the three pieces. So my first piece is right here. What does this become? Negative 8. What does my denominator become? 2. 2, yeah, 2 times 1 is 2. And then I have to type just the discriminant. So 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 11. And that gives me 108. Now, the reason we don't want to type it inside the house is because you're going to have to redo it again. If you do it with the house, you see how it gives me an ugly decimal? But that's not how we simplify our radicals, so we'd have to retype it. Do you really want to retype it? No. So that's why we just simplify it first, the discriminant, before we add the house. So 108 is not a perfect square. So I know when I'm simplifying radicals, I have to break it down with my factor tree. Um, it's an even number, so I know 2 goes into there. If I do 108 divided by 2, I get 54. 2 also goes into 54 because it's even. It goes into it 27 times. Does 2 go into 27? No, what about 3? Yeah. Yes, how many times? 9 times. And then 9 is 3 and 3. So I know that I have 2. And I have 3 that I can take out. So this becomes negative 8 plus or minus. What does it become? What's 2 times 3? 6. 6. And what goes back in the house? 3. Perfect. Now, here's my question. Does this simplify, like as a fraction? Yeah, I can't combine my negative 8 and my 6 because this has a root 3 and this doesn't, but I can divide to simplify. However, before you simplify, you have to separate. See how I made two fractions? Now I can simplify. So what's negative 8 divided by 2? Negative 4 plus or minus what's 6 divided by 2? 3. So remember, you can't simplify the inside of the house, but you can simplify the number in front of your coefficient. So there's my answer. That does not simplify. So I get negative 4 minus 3 root 3 and negative 4 plus 3 root 3. <coughs> Any questions? Okay, flip to the back. We're going to do two more like this, and then we're going to talk about some other stuff. Okay, so look at number three. Am I ready to find my A, B, and C? No. No, what do I need to move? Yeah, and where does that go? In the middle, because it's my B term. And I get x squared minus 3x plus 15 equals 0. Now am I ready to find my A, B, and C? Yeah. Yes. What's my A? One. B? Negative 3. C? 15. And then I build my skeleton.
and I'm going to plug in what I know. Okay, so let's simplify. What happens in this first part? What cancels? So what does it become? Positive 3. What's my denominator become? 2. Two. And then we have to type our discriminant. So negative 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 15. And I get negative 51. Now I want to show you, if you forget the parentheses here, especially when it's negative, do you see how I did not get the same thing? Please be super careful. You use parentheses every time you plug in your A, B, and C. So this becomes negative 51. Now, 51 is not prime. 3 goes into it 17 times, but 17 and 3 are prime. So can I simplify that radical? No. But what can I do? Yes, I have to put the I and make it positive. Now, does 3 over 2 simplify? Does I over 2 simplify? So do I need to separate this to two fractions? No, that's my answer. So I get 3 minus I root 51 over 2 and 3 plus I root 51 over 2. So if we notice our uh, discriminant was negative 51, which is less than 0, which was telling me I had 0 real answers or I had 2 imaginary answers. Okay, and these are not real numbers, so it was correct. Okay, last one, we're going to go all the way through like this. Um, it's equal to 0, so I can find my A, B, and my C. What's A? Four. B? A. C? Four. So I'm going to build my skeleton. I'm going to plug in what I know. Bless you. Okay, what does this first part become? Negative. Negative 8. What's my denominator become? Mm -hmm. And then my discriminant zero. is zero. What does the discriminant of zero tell me? So. I'm going to have one solution, one real solution. Well, that's because what's the square root of zero? Mm -mm. It's zero. So that means this piece goes away because if I add zero, does that change anything? No. If I subtract 0, does that change anything? So I'm just left with negative 8 over 8, which equals what? Negative 1. So that's why when you have a discriminant of 0, you only have one solution, one real solution. Any questions with the quadratic formula? OK, so if you look at number 5, whoa, 5 and 6. I'm not actually going to solve those all the way. We're just going to talk about how we would plug them in if we needed to solve them. So if you look at number five, what's wrong with it? Fractions. Okay, can we, do we want to plug in fractions inside of a fraction? No. No, it's not proper, and they're hard to get rid of. It's a lot of work that you don't want to do. So the best thing to do is to get rid of the fractions before you try to plug it in, okay? So I know to get rid of fractions, what do I have to do? Not a decimal. We don't want a decimal either. We have to have a common denominator. So which denominator is the biggest? Four. Four. Can two turn into four? Yes. Can one turn into four? So my least common denominator here is four. So I want all my denominators to be four. How do I turn a two into a four? Times two. So times two times two. How do I turn a one into a four? Times one. And now we simplify. So what's one times two? So 2x squared over 2 times 2 is 4. 
We didn't mess with this one because I already had a 4. Now, what's negative 3 times 4? Negative 12. Over 1 times 4 is 4. 0 times 4 is 0. Over 1 times 4 is 4. Do all my denominators match? Yes. What can I do now? Cancel them. Cancel them. Why can I cancel them mathematically? Anybody know? No. Well, it's because, think about it. How do you get rid of division? Because fractions are just division. So mathematically, if I multiply this side and this side, because what I do to one side, I have to do the other. If I multiply both sides by 4, doesn't that just cancel all the division? It literally just cancels everything. So what's my A here if I had to solve it? Two. What would be my B? And what would be my C? Negative 12. Does that make sense? Would those numbers be way prettier plugging in than the fractions? Yes. Yes. Okay, so we're not actually going to solve it. It was just finding A, B, and C so we could if we wanted to. Now, what about number six? Can I plug decimals into a fraction and it be proper? No. Okay, so how do I get rid of them here? Well, what what place are they rounded to or at? Tens. The tenths place. So technically, if I multiply both sides by ten, doesn't that just move the decimal over once? which you don't even have to show the step of multiplying by 10. Just know that if I move the decimal once here, I have to move it once for every single term. If I move it twice here, I have to move it twice for every single term. Now do we have numbers that I can find A, B, and C way better? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can I find them yet? No. What do I have to do first? Five, yeah. And what would my A be? Five, two. And C? I mean B, sorry. Four. And then C, negative three. Any questions with that? So just know that if it's a fraction or a decimal, you have to get rid of the fraction or the decimal first before you try to use quadratic formula. Okay, lastly, we're at the bottom. Okay, it says write the equation, or what equation did the following come from? Well, when it's not simplified like this, that makes life way easy, because this is B, A, C, this is opposite B, okay, and this is A. So what's my A? What's B? And what's C? One. So that would be 1x squared minus 9x plus 20. So that is the equation it came from. Super simple when it's not simplified. Now, this one is simplified, so it's a little different. Not much. We still can do it. It's just having to think a little more about the formula. Okay? Because we know what about this piece? It's opposite of what? B. So what's the opposite of negative 6? Six. six. So B is positive 6. What do we know about the denominator? How do you find it? It's the, a. the 2 times A. So what's the opposite of multiplying by 2? Divided by 2. Now what's negative 6 divided by 2? Negative 3. Negative 3. So now I know A and B. But where's the only place C is? It's inside. inside in the discriminant. So I know to find my discriminant, it's B squared minus 4 times A times C. And I know my discriminant here equals negative 84. Well, I know B and I know A, so can I plug in those to solve for C? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so B is 6 and A is negative 3. I don't know C, so that stays. <coughs> well, what's 6 squared? Uh, and what's negative 4 times negative 3? Negative I mean positive, six. positive 12 times C is just 12C. Now do we know how to solve from there? Yeah. Yeah, what do I do? Minus 36. Minus 36 on both sides. And I get 12C equals negative 120C. Last step. Divide by 12. And I get C equals negative 10. So now I know that I would have Y equals negative 3X squared plus 6X minus 10. Any questions with that? Okay, so this is what you're working on.